Hello everyone, it's me, Butterfly Spirit, aka Michelle. So guys, today I'm going to talk about this letter that I wrote to Jesus five years ago. Now, I'm going to tell you the situation about um, why I wrote the letter, and I'm going to be talking about, in this video, about answering my own um, prayer um, that I wrote in the form of a letter. Okay, so I'm going to be answering my own prayer in this uh, video. So I wrote this letter five years ago in 2013 uh, in the early part, I believe. I think it was about, um, it was in about February when I wrote this letter. February of 2013 is when I wrote it. Okay, so to get to why I wrote this letter. So me and my fiance, we were involved in an accident where my car was hit from behind. And um, it was hit from behind and it was, this basically happened on a day where it was an ice storm and it was really bad. Now, let me back up first. So what happened was that um, I had went to school because I was in college and um I had went through the classes for that day. And um, I knew that my fiance would be at work that day. And um, he was, his job was way far away from his family. Okay. And so what had happened was that um, he uh, needed a ride home. And I was in a conversation with him, like, after I got off from school, you know. Um, and he was like, well, you know, he got off at, he would be getting off at, like, you know, 6 o'clock or something like that. And, um, you know, he was talking to me and he was, you know, debating about whether he should talk to his family about coming to get him or whether, you know, um, I would come get him or whatever. And um, I told him, I'm like, well, hey, since I'm on my way, you know, I'm going to be going home anyway. Hey, I can drop you off. You know, it's not going to be very far for me to drop you off. You know, since your family lives, you know, they may live like 15 minutes away from me, but at least you'll get home and I'll get home and stuff. And I told him about the snowstorm and he was like, yeah, I know, you know. And so, um, so what happened was, is I drove over to my fiance's work and um picked him up and stuff and it was it was um it was like dark by this time so it was like it was like 6 10 6 15 when he finally came outside and stuff like that his job was closing because of the storm and stuff and so um what happened was that he got in the car and um we proceeded to go towards um towards the highway at first, right? And so we knew that it was bad um, because we we had known that it was like, it was like snowing at first, but then it was like sort of icing and we knew it was icing, but um, I decided to get on the highway anyway because I was like, oh, well, the highway is the fastest way. It'll be the easiest way to get there, you know, to get you to your family's house and I can go home and stuff before it gets too bad, right? And as we were driving, it was getting worse and worse. And so uh, we had traveled on a highway, but when we were traveling, we noticed that like it was becoming very difficult to drive and uh, because of like the um, the ice and on the ground, there was like black ice and stuff that we were traveling over. And so we get further down the highway. I'll say like, you know, 10 minutes on the highway. And then what happened is, is we decided to get off at an exit. Now, before we decided to get off at this exit, there were on the highway, it was like slow. People were going really, 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 really slow, right? And it, because of like the ice and the snow that was on the road and stuff, it was really bad and stuff. And we saw that people had gotten into accidents, cars that like it hit the side and stuff like that. And we were seeing that, you know, it wasn't the best idea to be on the highway. So it probably would have been better if I would have went down the streets and stuff like that. But, you know, I knew that it would just take longer, which is why I was on the highway. 
and I did have the opportunity to turn off and go on to another highway. Um, but I did not do that. And I guess because, like I said, I don't want to take a longer time, you know, than necessary, you know, trying to get hip hole with stuff. Because he couldn't go. Mm, sorry. He couldn't go home with me because, you know, I lived with my mom. And, you know, my mom, I don't think my mom would have been down with the idea of my fiance being where I lived at and stuff. And I was terrified of him coming over my house because I was like, oh, my God. You know, I don't want my boyfriend to know about, you know, like my living situation with mom and stuff. I don't want him to know that, you know, because I was really embarrassed about it and everything. And so, um, and I didn't reason for us to go over somebody else's house at the time either. Um, and stuff. I didn't really reason that or just staying in my school. I didn't really reason anything like that or whatever. Um, now in hindsight, I wish I would have done that or, thought about us getting like a hotel or something like that for us to like stay at you know now I think about it now but um you know and we were both over 18 so we could have got a hotel and that probably would have been the smartest thing to do was to head towards like um a place where we we went to a hotel before you know on a few occasions and stuff but I didn't think to do that you know I, I didn't think about it like that and I wish I wish I would have did, you know, because at least if we would have gotten a hotel, we could have just rolled out the storm there. But anyway, so we continued down the highway and it was like the standstill and stuff. People going slow. Like it was damn near like we were only going like five miles an hour damn near, you know, five or ten miles an hour. And um, so we get to this. We um, we. Basically, I was telling him, like, hey, I'm going to take this exit. Not that one, but the other exit. Because then, if I take this other exit, it'll be easier to get you over to where your family is, you know. And so, um, what happened was, we decided to take the second exit. So, we took the second exit. And when I was going down the exit, what happened was, I was going down the exit really slow. Because there was, like, ice on the exit and stuff like that. And it was going down like this, you know. And it curved around and stuff like that. So, down and it curved around. That's how the exit went. And so what happened was I decided to go on the exit really slow and I was going really slow and everything and stuff and we were, you know, making progress going down, the, you know, making a little progress going down, you know, slowly. And then there's this guy behind me, this black dude behind me. He's in his truck and he's just going fast, like going faster than me. And what happened was is that he was slid and he like, the speed he was going, he was going fast and I was going. And he hit my car. My car spun out of, like, damn near control and stuff. I don't know how I managed to get the car to stop. My fiancé was telling me that I was screaming and everything like that. But I got the car to stop. Then there was a thing, like, where, like, it took a minute for me kind of to register what had happened. You know, luckily we're not injured because he hit the back. And he hit, like, the the passenger side of the back of my car. And luckily my car is made out of metal because it's a, um, my car was made in 1992. So luckily, it, you know, my car was able to take the damage for us instead of us taking the damage, you know. Now if it had been a new car, ooh, we're about to be good. Might not have been good at all. So, um, so when the car finally stopped, then we just had to sit there. Now my car, instead of going down this way and facing this way, it was facing this way. It was facing the wrong way, okay? As though I was going up rather than going down. So then what happened was is that we were in shock for a minute. Then my fiancé, you know, and I got our bearings, you know, and then, like, I was telling him, I'm like, are you okay? He's like, well, I'm... You know, he's like, well, I feel like, you know, he's like, well, he felt like his chest was hurting and stuff like that. You know, whatever. I was like, oh, okay. Um, I'm like, well, we're going to have to call. I'm like, well, we need to call the, um, you know, we need to call 911 because, you know, we might have injuries that we don't know we have. So I got on my phone and um, I called and said, well, hey, we've been in an accident and we need to help and where we were and stuff like that or whatever. And so, uh, yeah. 
And the fucked up thing was that up at the top of the hill, there was police. And the police, you know, I think they knew that we had been in an accident, but they didn't do anything. And my fiance, I'm like, honey, I'm like, are you sure about getting up and getting out of the car? He's like, well, I want to let them know we've been in an accident and that we need help, you know, because maybe they'll be able to help us out. And so my fiance walks up there, talks to the police officer. You know, it's like really hard for him to get up there because it's like ice and stuff. And then like the police officer is like, oh, no, well, you just have to sit tight and wait until, you know, the fire department comes and stuff like that or whatever. There were no damn help at all. Okay. So, um, what happened was that he gets back in the car. I'm like, are you okay? You still okay? He's like, huh? I'm still a little hurt, but I'm all right. You know, my chest is okay, though. So then, what happened was that, um, we're there, and then the fire truck comes. And the fire truck is having a tough time coming down the hill, too, because it's icy. And they came down really close to where the car was and stuff or whatever, and damn near almost hit the car. Like, I swear that the, the fire truck went through the damn car down there. But I, you know, but it didn't. And it's so funny about when the firefighter people came and got out and stuff. And they asked us, like, you know, open the, I'll unlock the door, unlock the door. And they would, like, open the door. So, like, are you okay? Are you okay? You know. And they kept calling my, my fiance ma'am and stuff. And I'm like, what the hell? You know. And I was like, well, I'm okay, but just to be safe, I'm like, I think we should go to the hospital or whatever, you know, just to get checked out and stuff because we're, you know, you know, we're kind of in shock of what happened. So, you know, we, you know, when you're shocked and like, you know, you have injuries that you don't know you have, you know. And so it was like, okay. So um, they waited for the paramedics to come. And then the paramedics came and we walked up to the, um, the, um, what the paramedics was on the highway and stuff. And my car, I just, my car was just left there. And as I was driving away, you know, like, I, it, my car was kind of an afterthought that I left it there. It, it was really, like, an afterthought, you know, for myself. And so, um, we're driving away, and we end up at the hospital, and it turns out that we were okay. My fiance is chest was crushed but it wasn't it wasn't really bad you know it wasn't as bad like he was like he had like bruised it was bruising not crushed but it was like bruising on his his um like chest you know under his chest like his lungs it was bruising but he was okay you know and me you know my arm I told him my arm and her whatever so they gave me like a um a uh a arm thing like like a, a thing, like for somebody who broke their arm or they like a sprained arm or stuff. So they gave me that or whatever. I think I still have that or whatever. So, um, but my arm's okay now. So, <sighs> this is real early Sunday morning. That's why I'm yawning. And I woke up at six. So, and I don't know woke up at six. So. What happened was that, um, like, we went to the hospital and stuff, and we had to, um, we went there and we was there at the hospital. We got checked out. We was fine and stuff. But we needed somebody to come pick us up, and I called my brother, and I was like, hey, I'm like, you know, would you be able to come get us? And he was like, well, no, you know, he's like, it's really early, and I gotta go to work, blah, 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 whatever, it was something. And so he's like, well, you know, I won't be able to go home and get y'all to Till like the morning or whatever and I was like and it was in the middle of the night anyway it's like close to morning and shit but it was like probably like um by the time we got to the hospital it was like four in the morning three or four in the morning and then so it was cold and stuff me and my fiance rather than waiting on a ride to come like four hours or five hours later we wanted to get the hell out of the hospital so we got up we walked out the hospital after we got released we walked the hell out of the the hospital in the cold ass storm it was freaking cold and shit and we walked all the way to my cousin's house which happened to be like on foot it was like 15 minutes but if he was driving it was like two or three minutes to get to her house and stuff so we walked over to my cousin's house took 
took us like 15, 20 minutes to get there. And and I say this because, and it might have took 20, 25 minutes because it was snow and ice on the ground. We was trying to get there and stuff or whatever and stuff. And because we were tired, we were kind of laughing and giggly and everything and stuff. But it was cold, you know. And I was telling them, well, my cousin live over here, so it's okay. We can walk and stuff. So I think my brother had told my, my cousin about what had happened because she got a house over there. And so she was expecting us to come or whatever. So we came came in and stuff, and my cousin's, you know, uh, boyfriend was there. And um, he opened the door and stuff, and he was like, "How?" asked us how he was doing and stuff, and we was like, fine or whatever. Um, and, you know, we was just tired and stuff, whatever. And, of course, like, her boyfriend was all, like, mean and shit, like, telling us we didn't say hi, blah, blah, but we just been in a damn accident and shit, like, the fuck, you know? And so, we go downstairs to go sleep or whatever, and we just, like, pass on to sleep on, like, her couch down in her basement and stuff, and, because she has, like, a finished basement down there and stuff. And so, um, we go to sleep, and we're asleep there for a while, you know? And we're asleep there for some hours. And what had happened was, is while I was there sleeping downstairs, like, because he's my boyfriend and, like, I'm not married to him, then, like, it was some kind of, some kind of crazy ass shit where I guess, like, you know, where, like, I think, like, I don't know who it was, but somebody thought that, like, you know, that, like, me and my boyfriend were going to try to do stuff in, like, my cousin's basement or something or whatever, you know, because my cousin has, like, a, like, a, a, a teenage daughter and stuff, and, you know, I guess, I don't know if it was my cousin or her boyfriend was thinking that, like, we was gonna try to do stuff or whatever, I don't know, but, you know, like, sex or whatever, I think we was gonna be, like, having sex down there or something like that or whatever, because we was there, and I have more respect for people's house than that, you know, I'm not just gonna be doing stuff or whatever, you know. So, we got up, you know, after we got up, we got up and left, you know, we were still kind of exhausted, but I got up, like, about, I think it was, like, 8.30 or 9, because I wanted to leave my car. My brother was there, too. He was like, oh, okay, well, let's go ahead and get, um, let's go ahead and go get you or, you know, your, buy your car. So, um, when I went back to where my car was left at, it was gone. It was not there anymore. It was not facing the wrong way on the exit anymore, in the exit map. And so, we were looking for it, and so, we went to the, um, to the, the city hall where, uh, the city that we were in, where, like, my car had, had the accident in it. And then, like, we went to the city hall and found out. They were like, oh, well, well, such and such towing, you know, they tow vehicles and stuff like that. And, um, you know, um, well, your car was parked illegally, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, well, I'm like, we was involved in an accident. We told the police officer we'd been involved in an accident. We'd been hit and stuff like that. And there was a guy that was at fault. And we even got the guy's information you know, the guy gave us, you know, we wrote down, like, his name and his insurance and stuff like that. He had insurance with, um, I'm trying to think of the place. It was, um, I don't know. Um, but it was some insurance company. And he got, you know, we thought he was going to, you know, his insurance was going to cover my car and everything, you know, being hit and stuff. And what happened was is that it turns out that, he didn't have a policy with these people anymore. It was expired. And so, like, basically, my car looked messed up. You know, I now, um, on the night of the accident, I never looked at the back of the car. You know, I don't think I did. On my end, but I don't remember, you know. And so, oh, yeah, the guy had insured one. That's it. So this guy had insured one insurance. He told us he had it, but he didn't. You know, we, we would call the insurance company and stuff. They was like, oh, well, no, you know, and other and stuff. It was a past policy. And I was just looking for anything, you know, we could do. So, um, 
what had happened is that we finally found my car. It was at a junkyard. And my fiance had gotten paid, you know, and he paid to get my car out of the place. And like when I got my car back, there was stuff all over the place in my car. It was like wet stuff. Like everything was wet. Like the windows were down and stuff like that. And it was a whole bunch of stuff. Like all the stuff that was in my um, glove box was taken out. Like somebody was looking through all the stuff. You know what I'm saying? And stuff like that and or whatever. And I guess there's people from the junkyard looking to try to find out whose car it was and stuff because they, I think what they wanted to do was they have to notify you that your car is there, but they couldn't find like my number or anything. Like they found my name, but I guess they couldn't find like my phone number or anything on anything. And, and my car was just a mess. And then like my, um, there was like snow and on the stuff on my back of my trunk, and it was, like, horrible. And I was like, oh, my God, is my car, what the hell, you know, what happened to it, you know? Because my car was up and stuff, and, like, the hood was up and stuff, and, like, my light was damaged, and, like, the driver's side, like, the way the guy hit it was damaged and stuff, or whatever. And I was like, oh, my God. My boyfriend got my car out. It was, like, $200 or something like that, which sucked because it was a lot of money from him. Or it might have been $300. I don't know. So. And so, that money went out and stuff to get my car back. Now, luckily, my car could still drive and stuff like that. Luckily, it could still drive. So, I drove my car back to my mom's house and stuff. Um, and my boyfriend, like, I was in the car. My boyfriend was in the car with my brother. And basically, they tailed, they were behind me. And they tailed me back to, like, my mom's house where I parked my car and stuff. Okay. Now... During, um, during that time, like, I was, like, freaking in this, like, I was, like, hysterical during that time, okay? It was, like, I was really hysterical. And, like, I was, like, my mental state, I was not operating at the best mental state, even though I seemed calm, like, I was not. You know, I have been just been involved in an accident, and... My thought process was different. Um, and I even went to school. You know, I even decided to go to school after that. Um, I took a few days off of school, but when I did decide to go to school, um, what happened was is that I, um, I drove my car to school, and I parked my car. And then I got out, and my boyfriend was with me, you know, or whatever. And this is a different day. And then, um, the car still had the damage. And then, these white girls had the nerve to be laughing at my car and stuff like that or whatever. And they were laughing, too. And stuff, laughing at what my car looked like from the back and everything and stuff like that. Or whatever. But I was like, you know, and I felt bad, you know. And I was felt really bad because I had been in an accident or whatever. And I didn't have the heart to say anything to those girls. You know. And I, I did, you know. And my boyfriend's like, you know, don't worry about that shit, you know. And I was like, okay. So, um, my boyfriend, too, he was in this crazy hysteria, too. Like, we were in this crazy, like, mental process, you know what I'm saying, and stuff. And I went through, like, being frustrated, being angry over the course of days, and stuff like that. And I was pissed off because I was like, well, if I'm a Christian, why did this happen to me? What's going on? And all this other kind of stuff. And, um, my fiance was having, like, some issue with his family. I was getting stressed with my family, and I was just like, well, screw it. So, me and my fiance, um, we decided, you know, to, to get away from it all. So, what we decided to do is we went to, um, a hotel together. And most people would think, oh, you're just going to have sex. Well, no, we, we went because... You know, we took my car, even though it was damaged. We went, you know, because my car still drive. We went, and we just went to the hotel and just chilled out. Now, before we even even managed to, like, after we got the hotel room and stuff, and then we got back in the car to, like, drive around where our hotel was going to be at, because we had to, like, check in at the lobby and stuff, right? Then, like, there was this guy that kept following us and stuff like that, following the car, looking at the car, whatever. And then the police were there. And the police thought we were doing something shady, but we, we told the police, like, hey, well, there's this guy that keeps following us and stuff. And then 
the police go over and start talking to the guy, and we just drove to where, like, our ho hotel was, like, on the opposite side of, um, away from the lobby or whatever, okay? It's, like, around the corner from the lobby. So we'd have our parking space. And so we got a hotel room. And we got in the, um, we got in our hotel and we just went to sleep. Like, we were under so much stress. Like, so much stress. It was effed up, you know. It's fucked up. And so, like, we slept and we were at the hotel for, like, um, I think we were at the hotel for, like, a couple of days or something. And, like, you know, it was expensive because my boyfriend was paying for it and stuff. I had a little bit of money, but, you know, my money ran out. But we were at the hotel, you know, like, the first, when we first got there, we just slept. We laid down and stuff or whatever. Went to sleep and stuff. And then I got up, you know, and, like, I think at some point, like, first or second day, because I think it was the weekend. We got there on a Friday um, in the afternoon. And then, like, Saturday when we got up, like, you know, no, we did eat and all that stuff, but, like, once we got up on Friday, like, we did eat for dinner or anything, but, like, Saturday morning when we got up, I started talking to my boyfriend, and I was like, hey, babe, I'm like, you know, what are we gonna do, you know, we got all this bullshit going on, like, what, what the hell should we do, you know, and I'm like, hey, well, I told him, I'm like, well, we should get our own place, we should definitely get our own place, you know, because, you know, if we get our own place, then, you know, you and I can be together and stuff. And, you know, we won't have to worry about our families and the accident and all the bullshit, you know. And he was like, well, you're not going to like it. You're not going to like it. And I was like, why? He's like, because we'll have to eat ramen noodles and hot dogs. And I was like, baby, I didn't really care. I'm like, at least we'll be together and we don't have to worry about other people. And we'll, we'll be fine, you know. Now, we did end up getting our own apartment. Despite what, you know, despite the likes of my family or his family, we ended up getting an apartment together. And um, the great thing about the apartment was it was not that far from my school. It was close to, like, my uh, university, and it was close to his job. So he'd be able to go to work, and I'd be able to um, go to school. And it was better, you know. Now, the stuff, like, we got a lot more stuff. Now, when we first started off, we were sleeping on the floor, and we had, like, um, sleeping bags, damn near, in our, our room and stuff. We didn't have a lot of stuff. Now we have a lot more stuff, um, since then, you know, that we've, you know, a lot of stuff we've gotten for free and we bought some stuff, you know, but not a lot. Okay. So, um, yeah. And some people in our family gave us stuff, whatever, so. Yeah. And we've collected stuff. Ooh. Over the years and all that, you know. So, the letter I wrote five years ago, after the accident, I guess that in about February, I wrote this letter. And I'm going to read to you the letter that I wrote to Jesus because I did not, at the time, I didn't understand why it was that I even um, went through the accident or whatever. So, I'm going to read you guys what I wrote to Jesus and stuff. And at that time, I was a Christian. This time, like... I'm not a Christian, and I haven't been a Christian in, like, a couple years. Like, I would say, like, I've been free from Christianity for two years, so, yeah. So, here's the letter I wrote to Jesus. I said, Dear Jesus, what is my purpose? Why was Anwan and I, invo Why was Anwan and I involved in an accident? Have we lived our lives in such a way that we deserve that? When will we enjoy our lives without being bothered with stress? Sincerely, Michelle. So I'm going to reread the letter again. Dear Jesus, what is my purpose? Why was Anwan and I involved in an accident? Have we lived our lives in such a way that we deserve that? When will we enjoy our lives without being bothered with stress? Sincerely, Michelle. So I thought that since praying was not working for me at the time, my best thought process was to write down a prayer. And I felt like, okay, that was going to be something that was going to help my prayer get answered. Did that prayer get answered by a Jesus? No. 
Did it get answered by a Christian God? No. I never had a Jesus reveal himself to me and give me the answers to this stuff. I just want to say this right off the bat. That never happened. Now, I wrote this letter with the most sincerity. I had pain. I was stressed out. I'd been through an accident, the whole thing. And I wrote this letter. Okay? And did any Jesus, God, or the Bible answer my prayer that I wrote? No. Now, I assumed that it was more powerful to write it down. But guess what? It was not powerful to write it down. Because guess what? What happened was, is that it was never answered. Now, I told you that the other day, my fiance found this letter. Okay, now it's got writing on it and stuff like that, you know, and I can show you. It's got writing on it, you know what I'm saying? Can you see, like, the uh, writing and stuff? It's got something on it, okay? It's got writing on it. It's kind of hard to see because of, like, my settings and stuff. But basically, guys, um, basically, that's what I wrote. Now... What I'm going to do, okay, because I didn't realize, I forgot I even wrote it. You know, I wrote this letter. But now, I'm going to speak on this letter for y'all, okay? And I'm going to go sentence by sentence about this. So let's start off with the Dear Jesus part. Now, at the time when I wrote this letter in 2013, in February, okay, after I had the accident, I was a Christian. So I believed if I were to write to Jesus, then he will respond back to me. Because at the time, prayers were not working for me at that time. So I thought, you know, Jesus is going to help out because of what the church says, where they say, you know, if you ask, you know, if you, you know, you ask Jesus or you ask God, you know, then, you know, you know, what's that Bible verse? Seek you shall find, ask and it should be given. Uh, that's Matthew 7, 7. You know, and um, now what I said is not exactly what it says in the Bible. But if you want to know what I'm talking about, open your Bible, go to Matthew 7, 7. Okay. Now, there's another verse that's just like Matthew 7, 7 in another part of the Bible. But I'm going to stick with Matthew 7, 7. Okay. Um, now, Matthew 7, 7. Let's see. I'm going to see if I can find out my fiance's um, Bible. I'm going to find it for y'all because I'm not, because I got a Bible, but it's not the King James authorized version. And I want you guys to know what it says in the King James authorized version of the Bible because that's what a lot of people go by and I'm sticking to that. So I'm going to go to see if I can find it in Matthew. I'm just going to go by my own, uh, you know, just looking to the Bible myself. So what does Matthew 7, 7 say? Okay, here's what it says. Matthew, so Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. It says, and the King James Bible, there is like a bold heading that says, tell God what you want, right? Okay, so Matthew 7, 7, I'm going to read the verse. It says, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Okay, so with my letter, what did I do? I asked. I asked for what my purpose was, asking about the accident, and I asked about when our suffering was going to be over in terms of stress. That's what I asked, okay? And I had it in a nice little letter, okay? And according to the Bible, it says, ask, and it shall be given you. 
I was never given an answer by a Jesus. That never happened. Okay. And it says, seek and ye shall find. Okay. Well, seeking, you know, I was seeking the answers. Because, see, in my own experience, I could not find. No matter how many times I tried to turn over what happened to me and my fiance with that accident and what was going on in our lives, I was seeking answers, but nothing was coming. Okay? So I thought to seek. And they said, you'll find. I didn't find the information. So Jesus didn't give it to me. I was looking for it. The information, it didn't come to me. Okay? So I did what the Bible said. I asked and should be given. No answers came to me. I sought answers in my own life. That didn't happen. Okay? And I didn't find nothing either. Okay? And it says, knock and it shall be opened unto you. Okay? Now. Knock and it should be asked. Knock and what? Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Right? As though it's a door. Like, you open the door and you're going to receive all. Right? Receive all things you want. It didn't happen to me. I told you, my fiance just found this little letter that I wrote to Jesus that is five years old. It's actually a little over five years old. It's because I wrote it in February. So let's see. Um, let's see. So a year will be February of 2000 and um, February of 2018 be five years. Okay. And let's see how many months. March, April, May, June, July, August. So this letter is five years and six months old. Okay. Five years, six months old that I wrote this letter. Okay. And now I'm finally answering my own prayer. Okay. So, this is going to tell you why I decided to, you know, write the letter to Jesus. Because I believe that Jesus is going to be there. He's going to be, you know, he's going to be there to help me out and everything like that. And everybody always says Jesus is going to do this and that or whatever. But Jesus is not the, the loving and friendly person you think he is. Just read the Bible. You'll find out. In church, I know they like to make him seem all nice and friendly, but he ain't. Okay? All right. So. Let's keep going with the letter. I asked in the letter, what is my purpose? I never got any information about what my purpose was. Now, what some people are going to say with regards to this video is they're going to say, oh, well, you know, Jesus, you know, well, Jesus, you know, he, you know, you know, uh, or God will, though, you know, your purpose is to serve the Lord and this and other, you know, And you hear people in church say something like, well, you know, broad is the path, but narrow is the way, right? Well, if everybody is a Christian, right, and they're on the path, right, how can people go a narrow way if they're all doing the same thing, you know, as being Christians? There is no way to, to get enlightenment from doing it, okay? So I asked, what is my purpose in the letter? Okay, and I never got Jesus to reveal himself to me. I never got a Christian God to reveal to me or anything like that. Never did. Okay, never, never. Okay, so my purpose went unanswered. I didn't get any answers. Now, what I now know, a little over five years later since I wrote this, I know now what my purpose is. My purpose was to leave Christianity and to put down that childish shit we call Christianity. That is what my purpose was. It's to put it down and to not confide into it. Because, see, when I wrote this letter, I had belief that being a Christian and going to church and everything was going to do something, but it didn't do nothing. Okay? Now I know my purpose is to learn about my spirit, to connect with my higher self, to gain understanding about the esoteric, learning about crystals, essential oils, learning about, you know, the planets with astrology, about numerology, learning about things like Reiki and stuff like that. That's what it's about, you know, 
It's about me learning about my spiritual side because we're spiritual beings having a human experience. But a lot of us get trapped by this human stuff rather than the spiritual being that we are. Because a lot of people are not going to be able to answer the question about our spirits and what nurtures our spirit. Church doesn't believe in no spirit. They might talk about a Holy Spirit, but guess what? They don't believe in it. They don't. If you come in talking about you see spirits and stuff, they're going to think you're crazy. But yet they're going to talk about this Holy Ghost. Get the hell out of here. So, I hear laughter in the background because my fiance is laughing. So, um, oh my God, he's laughing. It's so funny. <laughs> So, um, let's move on to the other part. Why was Anwan and I involved in an accident? Jesus never answered that, and no Christian God ever answered that either, okay? Never answered. I ain't hear nothing. You know, I didn't get Jesus to, you know, show up to me one day at school say, Hey, Michelle, you know, I'm sorry you got into an accident. You know, uh, I'm going to give you the money to fix your car. You know, he ain't do that. Let, let's get serious. I ain't getting no God, you know, period. And, you know, because, you know, that in the Bible, God talks to these people, right? And he appears to these people. You know, y'all know that story where they say God appeared to, uh, I forgot who he appeared to, but he appeared to somebody in the Bible as a burning bush, right? Okay, well, I ain't seen no damn burning bush. I ain't seen nothing that was, you know, tell me that. You know, God's here for me and all this other kind of shit. I ain't see that. Not in real, actual life. You see, what the problem is, is that you got people, you know what I'm saying, that they believe in this Jesus, God, faith saved, Jesus saves, and all this other kind of shit. They believe in this stuff, right? But I'm like, well, if God can reveal himself in the Bible to people, right? And people see, you know, Jesus in the Bible, right? And they, they see him, right? Okay, well, why the hell is it that I didn't get a, I didn't get, you know, the, you know, God to come up to me in real actual life or Jesus to reveal himself to me in real actual life? What the hell is that? You know what I'm saying? Because he ain't do that. They, you know, I ain't get no Jesus to say, you know, Michelle, I know you've been suffering or whatever, and I'm, I'm going to do something to make it better. I'm going to give you this, that, whatever. Right? No. Now, the reason why I believe that we were in the accident was because that accident was something that was going to push us in the direction so that we get our own apartment, so that we can focus on doing things and being able to learn about things in our lives, being free from the stress from our family, so we can get our own sense of normal. You know, that's what I think it was about. You know, especially because I was in college, you know what I'm saying? And in college, like, you know, I needed to be able to have that quiet and peaceful time. Because when I lived at home with my mom and stuff and I did with my family, like, it was not something where I felt like I had peace. And for my fiance, it was the same thing for him. You know, he didn't feel like he could have peace. He was working and stuff, whatever, and stuff. And he was trying to do his thing. But at a time, you know, stuff just became too much for the both of us where we needed our own oasis, our own apartment. And we ended up getting it. And that is the reason why I feel like we were involved in the accident. Because it took for us to be crazy as fuck for us to make the decision to get our own place. To get outside our comfort zone to face that unknown so we would get our own place. You know what I'm saying? And put ourselves in a better situation. Now, am I going to say now that we got everything figured out? No, but we're on a better, you know, we're on a better trajectory and better path than what the hell we were as Christians. Okay? So that's why I feel we got into the accident. Because it was meant to get us in that state of mind and to show us things that maybe we were not aware of so that we would make the right move that we had to. Okay? And no Jesus said nothing. No Christian God said, said nothing. The Bible didn't say nothing. Nothing. Okay? None of that said anything. No Holy Ghost appeared and said nothing. No angels, no seraphims, no cherubims. Nothing. I mean, nothing. You know that, you know, when the church, they going to say that all this and all that. No. Nothing. You know what I'm saying? And then people say they got some testimony and all this. And like, cut that bullshit out. You know what I'm saying? Cut, cut it out. All right? 
Testimony shit, shit's fake. It's all fake. It's all a facade. It's all a bunch of hooey or boo la la or whatever. It just is. It's smoke and mirrors. You know? So. Um, next point letter, I said, have we lived our lives in such a way that we deserved that, meaning the accident? And no, we didn't. We didn't do anything to get the accident. In fact, we shouldn't, according to, uh, according to what they say in the church and in the Bible and all that shit, right? According to, you know, the things that are said when you're in church and the nice little warm and fuzzy things they say in the Bible about the good shit, right? We shouldn't have gotten to an accident. There should have been cherubims and seraphims that appeared to stop the accident. Jesus could have showed up and stopped the whole damn thing and stopped the guy from coming so we'd be safe and stuff like that. Or if they, you know, Jesus was too busy, he could have showed up and gave me a brand new car. But guess what? He didn't do it. Okay? My car didn't get fixed from Jesus. My car got fixed because my dad actually found the stuff to fix my car. You know what I'm saying? And it was my mom and my dad who were the ones who told me, Michelle, go ahead and keep your car. Go ahead and keep driving in it. You know what I'm saying? And doing what you got to do. That's who was there helping me. So in a way, I would say that, you know, my parents were God. You know what I'm saying? Because they were helping me with that, that situation. You know what I'm saying? Now, all the time, they may not have been the best, and they may have caused me stress. You know what I'm saying? But still, at that time, they were God. You know what I'm saying? Because they was guiding me towards stuff. Okay? They were actually physically there. You got me? You know? And also, you know, my brother was there to help, too. You know what I'm saying? With him driving us to get my car and stuff. So, he was also serving this guy as well, because he was helping out. You know what I'm saying? So, no. We didn't do nothing to get that. Now, you got some people gonna say, you ain't Christian enough, you ain't praying enough and all this shit. Oh, please. Do you not know? If you're a Christian, do you not realize... That the people that Jesus hung out with were killers, murderers, rapists, people who are drunkards, the whole thing. Jesus associated with sinners. Okay? So, it don't matter how bad you are because one of Jesus' disciples was a murderer. Okay? And I've never done anything like that. None of those extreme shit that, you know, what the disciples did. I ain't never done that shit. So, no, I didn't deserve this accident. But it was something that had to happen in order to get us to where we are now, okay? And Jesus ain't tell me none of this stuff either. Like I said, he ain't revealed himself to me. I ain't have, have no cherubim, no seraphims, nothing. You know, no Holy Ghost, not a shit. Come to me and say nothing, okay? So, um... Next, next sentence. I said, when will we enjoy our lives without being bothered with stress? And I said, sincerely, Michelle. Because Jesus going to know who I am anyway, if I'm saying Michelle. Because there's millions of Michelles, but he going to know because I wrote this letter. You know what I'm saying? He should have that connection with me to know. Okay? So, when will we enjoy our lives without being bothered with stress? Jesus never answered. No Christian God ever answered. The Bible didn't get no answer. No church people get no answer. Nut. Okay? I'll answer the, the uh, question about when we'll enjoy our lives without being bothered with stress. Truth is, we still have stress that bothers us. We still have things in our lives that cause us to feel fear and everything like that. But, you know... I'm learning about a way to deal with stress, which is through meditation, you know, and through the use of essential oils and things like that, you know, and finding ways that I can do stuff so I can enjoy myself and stuff as opposed to getting caught up in stress. Now, I do stress and I do worry a lot, but what I'm trying to do is work on the future so that I don't have to stress out. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to worry about the things that cause me to have negativity. Instead, what I can do is I can live a life of happiness and do some of the things I want to rather than continue to live a life of stress. Now, you got a lot of people who they believe in, you know, they believe in Christ or Jesus. They believe in him and, you know, Christianity and all that stuff. 
They believe in it because that's their hope. They think by praying, it's going to help their situation. People think by looking at the Bible's holy relic, that's going to make their situation better. Okay? They think by giving to the church, that it, you know, giving money to the church, that's going to make their situation better. Okay, they think by posting stuff on Facebook about Jesus, God, faith saves, Jesus saves, and all of this other kind of shit, they think it's gonna make their life better because they think Jesus is gonna see it or God's gonna see it, and they're gonna think it's gonna do something. But let me tell y'all something, who are Christians out there. Okay, the God you know, okay, that God that you know, it's not going to make your life better. In fact, in the Bible, he says you need to be content. What you're surrounded. No matter how fucked up your situation is, you have to deal with it. Okay? You got to be content with it. Okay? This is what I'm doing in my life. You know what I'm saying? Okay? That God that you serve is going to be okay with telling you that you're not good enough. Okay? He's all right with you stuff. Slaving your life away and shit like that. Not feeling good. You know what I'm saying? He thinks it's better for you to have sorrow than to be happy. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, the thing is, is that, oh, this is what I was going to say about Facebook. Those of y'all who are Christians posting stuff on Facebook, posting pictures and saying Jesus saves, faith saves, God saves, and anything with God in it, Jesus in it, whatever, and sharing it and saying if you share this picture, then God's going to bless you and all this other kind of shit. God ain't going to bless you. It is not going to happen. I'm sorry to burst people's bubble that's going to watch this video, but it's not going to happen. Okay? Who is the one who blesses you? You do. Through your own effort, you bring about things that are the fruits of your labor. Not some Jesus, not some God in a book. Okay? It's supposed to be in a holy book, not some holy ghost. It ain't going to happen like that. You know what I'm saying? We know that success comes through effort. Okay, how do we know this? We know this because look at the celebrities that you see on TV that everybody's, you know what I'm saying, going to their concerts to these rap stars and every damn thing else, right? And these celebrities who people go to the movies and shit, spend their money and get some expensive ass popcorn and take us to the movies and shit, right? Look at this, all right? Look at that. People going and spending money on, you know what I'm saying, shirts and shoes and hats and dresses and everything that celebrities come out with, makeup and everything from these rich-ass celebrities who don't need their money, right? Look at that. You know what I'm saying? You got people over here, you know what I'm saying, trying to serve two masters. They trying to be over here worshiping celebrities, but they also supposed to be worshiping God. But you can't serve two masters according to what the Bible says. All right? Now, think about Facebook. The Bible says that you ain't supposed to be associating with sinners. You ain't supposed to be around drunkards, idolaters, right? You ain't supposed to be around rapers, people who rape. Sorry, I said rapers. You ain't supposed to be around people who rape people, people who are um, <clears throat> gamblers. You ain't supposed to be around that. You know what I'm saying? People who, you know, stealing from other folks. People who are, you know, sexually promiscuous and cheating and all that stuff. You ain't supposed to be around all that. What's on Facebook? Everybody that fit those descriptions that I just gave. You know what I'm saying? Everybody. So, if you're a Christian, you ain't supposed to be on no damn Facebook. You ain't even supposed to have no Facebook profile and posting your pictures and shit. <clears throat> you ain't supposed to have that. Now, you might say, why is my voice getting, you know, why is my voice getting choppy and stuff? Oh, it's part of Jesus. I'm going to answer. No. It's because I've been making this video for so long and sharing some damn knowledge. Now, I bet you it's because the demon is trying to make the damn air dry and shit so I don't say nothing. But I'm just keeping it 100. Okay? Now, I'm going to say this. You're a Christian. You shouldn't be on Facebook. You're supposed to be like those ascetic people. You're supposed to be at a bare minimal means. According to the Bible, you're supposed to get rid of your shit. You're supposed to be down to the bare damn essentials. That's what you're supposed to be doing. But, of course, you got Christians who are not going to be doing it. They don't want to do that. They want to have stuff. They want to be like everybody else. But then they want to claim that they're a part of a socially acceptable religion called Christianity. Okay? So, when will, 
me and my fiance and one when we enjoy our lives stop being under stress. We'll enjoy our lives when we are able to live our lives without having to worry about jobs and having our own business and doing that and moving forward in life. You know what I'm saying? Now, our success could come through jobs. My dream is not to have to have a job. You know what I'm saying? My job, the thing with jobs, like, I don't want to, you know, have to go to work in order to make money. I want to make my own damn money. That's when I'm going to be free from stress. You know what I'm saying? A maximum amount of stress. I might still have a moderate amount of stress, but that'll be all right. But the shit about, you know, a massive amount of ton of stress that I had before when I was a kid and teenagers and shit, when I was a teenager, I shouldn't have that. All right? So, I'm just here to tell y'all this right here. The only way that you're going to get anywhere is through your own effort. A lot of people underestimate the things that they do to move themselves forward. And they say, well, God blessed them with something or Jesus blessed them and stuff. No, God and Jesus didn't bless you. You made the damn effort. And y'all need to start realizing the fact of y'all efforts and treating yourselves accordingly and realizing that you are God. You were the one making stuff possible. You know, you were the one doing, you know, things that need to be done so you can move forward. You are the one who is over here being an angel to somebody who needs help. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's a person needs help or an animal needs help or whatever. You're the one doing it. But you can also be a demon also. You could be demonic. You could be a demon if you're the person who's going and causing people a bunch of headache and yelling and cussing people out and doing some evil ass shit and shit or whatever. But then you want to go to a church and go to the podium and, you know, go over there and go to the front of the church and kneel down and give it all up to God and shit like that and pray or whatever. And then they say your sins have been forgiven. But in the Bible, let me tell you something. You got one time. Okay. Once you have the knowledge that you have done something wrong. Okay. You do it again. You ain't going to heaven. And it says in the Bible. Now, the reason I don't tell you in your church is to tell you in church is because they want to keep getting your money. So they're not going to be honest about what the Bible says. Especially with the stuff they say about women. There's a lot of women in churches over here talking and shit. Right? The Bible says they ain't supposed to be talking. They want to know so they need to ask their husband. That's what they need to do. Okay? Let's get real. Let's get real about this shit. You know what I'm saying? Let's be literal about this shit. Let's be real fucking life about this shit. About this religious shit. Because the celebrities you see on TV... They made efforts to get where they are, and that's why they got the money they got. That's why they live the lives they live. They don't get it because of, you know, some Jesus, God, faith saves, Jesus saves, whatever. Because everybody's saying, you know, that Jesus saves, faith saves, God saves, and everything. They poor. They poor. Okay? And that, that's what it is. Okay? It ain't, you know, I don't see nobody saying that. Now, you do got those pastors you're making. You know, TV pastors is making a shitload of money off people's misery and suffering and shit like that. And, and then praying and stuff. But see, y'all giving them your money. And they know that you need this religious stuff. And y'all giving them money, so that's making them rich. You paying these pastors. You know, it's got these these businesses. You paying their bills. But then your house is falling down. You, your kids ain't eating. Or you ain't eating if you ain't got kids. And you know what I'm saying? And you and your, you know, significant other fighting and shit? Of course. Because you're lacking. But you're lacking because you don't know the truth about Christianity and about life. <clears throat> so, yeah. So, in this video, I answered my own prayer. And I didn't, you know, and I waited five, what the hell, five years and six months. Okay? And, you know, people, you know, people can instantly get, um, in the Bible, they can instantly get an answer from God. Or they can get an answer from Jesus, right? In the Bible. But it by the time I got to answer my own prayer in this five years and six months, that tells me there is no Jesus. There is no, you know, there is no Christian God. That Bible's full of shit. Okay? That's what it tells me. 
All right. Now, I might get some people who don't like what I say, but I ain't putting no frosting on no old food. I'm going to give it to you straight like it is. Okay. So, thank you guys for watching. This has been Butterfly Spirit 314. And I'm keeping it real. Okay. Uh, look out for my next video when that'll come out. Um, I don't know. Uh, might come out pretty soon. I'm um, thinking about doing a video on essential oils or whatever in my experience and it, chakras and essential oils like oils class I had. So I'm going to tell you guys about that when uh, I get time to do so. So thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye.